Cremation was not started by uh, a society. It was not started by a renegade funeral director. It was not started by uh, some strange people. Uh, cremation has always been one of the choices available when a person dies. This is a cremation unit manufactured in the United States. It is a retort type design unit, typically referred to as a pathological incinerator. We have air jets to assist us in the cremation process itself, which are on a lower level, as we well as have them in the roof area. The burner area for the primary chamber is located here. We have a second burner located in the back of the chamber or in the afterburner chamber, as well as one in the rear of this particular chamber. The temperatures inside a cremation unit will get between 16 and 1800 degrees. Funeral professionals are for whatever type of disposition a, a per person would like associated with proper remembrance, ceremony, and ritual. We have a cardboard roller to assist us in moving a container or a casket into the cremation unit. What you wear is up to you, but state laws usually require some sort of rigid container. This one, by the way, is empty. Several things we have to consider when we're dealing with cremation, we as operators, that is. We consider type of container, we also take into consider the overall weight, but another factor which is takes which has represents how long the cremation may take is typically the bottom out of body fat. We won't know that, but we will have to estimate that so we can typically say in a case of an average weighted person will take in this particular machine approximately one hour and a half. We do have and have run into situations where infants have taken considerable amount of time, again due to the amount or lack of body fat, as well as even an overweight person or a younger person, again, the less body fat, the longer it may take to perform an actual cremation. Some people will choose cremation because they see cremation as a way to maintain more control. In other words, if I'm at the gravesite after the ceremonies, we leave the gravesite and I leave my father, grandmother, whatever the case might be there. I have to leave. I have to go home. That person is staying here. With cremation, we many times get to take the cremated remains home with us. We are now ready to reposition the remains to the secondary chamber, which is located at the rear of the machine. Typically, most companies use a hoe and a broom to do that work. The hoe and the broom, as you can see, will then be used to sweep and push the remains back to the secondary chamber. Typically, the remains that are left are the bone fragment and casket ash, clothing ash. Cremains is a contrived word. All right. They are not ashes. They are cremated remains. That is still a human being. And all respect and all dignity and all reverence must be shown to those cremated remains. We're now ready to recover the remains from the rear of this chamber. We will now then begin to transfer the remains into our cooling area. And we still use our hoe and broom as we had described before. And then down from here into our transfer container. We'll remove the transfer container and place the cremated remains into a work tray. Now typically the cremated remains in the work tray will be, could be as large as four to five inches and quite larger uh, and this material needs to be reduced in size. We will first clean the cremated remains by using a magnet to remove any ferrous metals and visual inspection to remove any other material that may be not cremated remains. We will then transfer the cremated remains into a processing unit which reduces the cremated remains to uniform size. This takes between two and five minutes. From the processing unit, we will then have the final cremated remains result. This will weigh between five and seven or eight pounds, depending again upon the size of the individual or the casket or container that was used in the cremation process. 
upon completion, they're then transferred into your temporary receptacle and then ready for final disposition. Remains can be placed in an urn and be displayed on your mantle or in a niche in a structure built specifically for cremated remains called a columbarium. They can be buried in a grave or scattered wherever local laws will allow. If you want them scattered at sea, you can do it yourself or Larry Day can do it. He's a funeral director turned sea captain and now holds 700 services a year, three miles out into the Pacific Ocean. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out are born of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Sometimes they'll do it right away. Sometimes they'll think about it. The person might have been on their mantle, a little urn or something. People, when they go through something like this, it's kind of not the end of the circle, but it helps getting them through that grief cycle. And the possibilities seem to be endless, including becoming part of these glass sculptures. The white flecks are the cremated remains. Or you can place your loved one's remains in a cremation keepsake pendant designed to allow sharing among family members. We notice in the post-Civil War period, late 70s, early 80s, we began to see in our professional journals reference to so-and-so's undertaking establishment has added a room, a chapel, where the body may be viewed and a funeral service held. Then we notice that he has added a morgue, a place of custody for the body. And they talk of them being in the basement, sometimes with cakes of ice to provide refrigeration, and so forth. Uh, even the public morgues at times did not have ice. They had cold water running over them.